<laughs> Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to, to be here with all of you, and it's a pleasure to be part of this prestigious panel. Exactly, trust and trust on the internet. And one of the uh, risks of 2011 is actually the internet. As we know, and I come from the city that invented the World Wide Web, we are sitting on an infrastructure which is now 20 years old. An infrastructure which was not designed to carry the burden it's carrying today. The internet was designed by physicists in CERN, and at that time the spirit was that we need to develop something that allows us to transmit data, websites, information efficiently and fast, but the security was not at all thought at that time. The internet did not have at that time the concern that we have today, which is the person concern. We are moving from an internet of machines, which is the one that has characterized the last 20 years, to an internet of people. Now the center of the gravity of the internet is the person. Companies like Facebook and others are demonstrating the center of gravity is the person, and around that person all the transactions will move. The problem we are facing with that is that the infrastructure that now carries the internet, whether it are government transactions, national ID cards, transport systems, customs, financial services, are all of them built on an infrastructure which is not trustworthy. This is empowering the person to do harm. The last years we had an unprecedented year in terms of attacks. Not only WikiLeaks, which has been pretty much portrayed in the media, but also attacks related to data theft, using a usurpation of identity, accessing illegal data. And all that was possible because not only the internet is not secure, the World Wide Web was not designed to carry that, but the behavior of users is totally irresponsible. We are still using the internet as a storage database. Without security, having data centralized on databases put organization in a threat. What is happening, and this is the vision for the future, is that by empowering the user, you will be in a situation where you will reverse the logic. The user security will be reinforced as a way to create a transactional internet and be able to provide transactional services, which is basically the aim we are, we are doing in the next years to come. But the problem we have is that the threats, in our days it's very easy for a very unsophisticated hacker to access into an infrastructure just by buying a software from the internet will cost something like $300 and with that software being able to hack your infrastructure, your mobile phone, your GSM communications. So because the threat now is very high and the sophistication of the threats is very low. In 10 years ago, you need a mainframe to make an attack. In our days, you just might do that with your iPhone. So that's creating a situation where we need to develop a option for that. The, uh, as you can see here, this is the progression of the threat and the complication of the intruder. The intruder is getting very totally unsophisticated and the harm into the attack sophistication is incrementally growing. So what is going to happen in the next 10 years? We are not only adding more people to the internet, Facebook is one example, but we are also adding devices. The internet will connect 50 billion devices by the year 2020. Not only you will be able to be uh, exchanging data, emails, but you will be able from your mobile phone to control your home security, your alarm system, you will activate and deactivate your car, you will be able to access your, your home corporate, you will access, as access control your office. So those 50 billion devices will be interconnecting to each other through the internet and will be related to a digital ID. Obviously, the obvious concern of that is privacy, what we call PII, personal identifiable information. This is the most dangerous part while we are accessing the internet with a password and we are accessing a social network, this is fun, but if you are compromising your PII, your personal identifiable information, you are putting yourself at risk. Many of the social networks, without seeing any name, has already announced that by mistake they have been communicating PII information to third users without realizing the impact that that will have in their, in their privacy and in their own security. As we complicate infrastructure and we add more layers and more devices, these privacies will grow uh, into a major problem. I am, uh, in a few days, uh, that was talking about rethinking personal data, which is going to be one of the main issues of this year on how can we protect PII information and personal data from users. 
Many countries like India are announcing digital ID projects. I know that Saudi Arabia has a digital ID project. Uh, President Obama just announced a few weeks ago in the United States and all Americans will have a national ID project which will not necessarily be a government ID. What is going to happen is over 7 billion people are going to have a mobile phone in the years to come. Those 7 billion people are going to be added to the infrastructure and that is going to be increasing the complexity of the problems we are facing now. So this is the risk. The solution is to treat data in the same way we treat products. We do know how to handle products. We have international organizations of like, such as World Trade Organization that handles dispute resolution on products and services. We do not have an international organization that does the equivalent on data. Data is the product of the 21st century. For that, we need to improve the way countries build legislation. Countries should treat the Internet not anymore as a technology play, but also as a geopolitical play. You want to control your environment. You want to control your cryptography. You want to control your national IDs and cryptographic root keys. And by doing that, we will be able to accommodate something like one billion people that they will be coming to the Internet in the next year, year to come. One billion more people are going to be using the Internet. They are bringing, obviously, a huge opportunity for humankind. They are bringing also a huge complexity, as these billion people are using the Internet for everything in life, whether it's education, health, uh, tourism, and just as simple as paying your taxes. So the advice for avoiding the risk is to take this very seriously, to develop legislation, to create models on where nation sovereignty is respected, to protect your personal data, to be responsible with the data that you load the internet. Actually, uh, a very good lesson. We have been criticizing a lot of developing countries because they have been very concerned about giving open access to the internet. What has been proved and those concerns were right. And now is a time for learn from emerging economies in the way you have been handled this. Thank you very much.